Welcome back to our channel. My name is Teacher Smith and today we are going to understand a very interesting concept of clock problems. So recently, in the few past years, we have observed clock problem has arrived four of the times. So this year as well, if clock problem arrives, we should be prepared for the challenge. So let's take an example from NMOS 2021, question 14. The question says, the clock below shows 3.34 p.m. We need to find out the obtuse angle in degrees between the hour hand and the minute hand. So here we need to find out the angle between the hour hand and minute hand. So first of all, can I solve this using geometry? Of course not, because there's slight angles between hour hand and minute hand that's difficult to calculate directly. So let's first understand how to solve clock problems. Here, starting off with a simple question, if I ask you, how many intervals does a clock have? Yes, it's quite obvious, right? It's just 12 of the interval. Clock has 12 intervals. Now, the simple trick is we need to relate clock problems with travel problems, as in chasing problems. Now, how? How clock problems are related to travel problems? If I ask you, in travel problems, what is the relation between speed, distance and time? Yes, it's very simple. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. Now, the same logic applies in clock problems as well. Here, we can observe minute hand and hour hand are always chasing each other. You can think of it as a police. Here, a fat thief, a fat short thief is running and a tall, thin but fast policeman is chasing after him. It is similar to the hour hand and the minute hand. The hour hand is fat, it's slow and it's short. And the minute hand is tall, thin and very fast and always chasing the hour hand. Even after crossing it, it will again try to chase the hour hand. So we can quite relate this with chasing problems. Now here, we are talking about speed first, right? So in a clock, how many hands does move? Yes, there are three of the hands, but we are only concerned about two, that is minute hand and hour hand. So we can calculate its speed. Talking about distance, in travel problems, distance is calculated in kilometers, meters, right? But in clock problems, the hands move in circular direction. So what will be the unit of distance that it travels? Ah, it moves in circular manner. So the distance traveled will be in degrees, right? So distance is in degrees. What about time? Yeah, time is same that is hour, minutes and seconds. Now to keep it more standardized, we'll use only seconds and minutes to calculate. Most probably we'll use minutes only. So here we can quite relate clock problems with travel problems. Now, if I want to calculate the speed of minute hand first, minute hand speed is equal to distance divided by time, right? So distance. If I ask you this minute hand, if it completes a whole circle and returns back here, how much distance does it travel? Yeah, it travels 360 distance. And the time it takes is? Ah, to travel a complete journey, it takes one hour, which is nothing but 60 minutes. So if I calculate, what is the speed of minute hand? It's just six degrees per minute, that's it. Now talking about our hand. Our hand is the same. Here, if you calculate this hour hand, if it moves only one interval, only one interval, how much degree does it travel? Yeah, there are 12 of the intervals and 360 degree. So if I want to calculate one interval, it's just 360 divided by 12, which is nothing but 30. And to just cover one interval, how much time it takes? Yes, to travel, it takes 60 minutes. That is one hour. So I just divided by 60 to get 0 0.5 degrees per minute. So here, what we can understand is the minute hand travels 6 degrees every minute and the hour hand travels 0.5 degrees every minute. So if I want to calculate by which speed the minute hand by minute hand travels and catches the hour hand, what is the speed by which it catches? Now it's a catching problem and in catching problem what happens to their speed? 
yes we subtract them so if i want to calculate the chasing speed it's just 6 minus 0 0.5 which is 5.5 degrees per minute so minute hand always chases the hour hand 5.5 degrees every minute so understanding this basics let's take a short example a simple example to understand more about clock problems the question says how long does it take for the minute hand and hour hand to form 90 degrees starting from 4 o'clock? So how much time it takes for minute hand and hour hand to form 90 degrees? Let's understand. Here it's forming 90 degrees. So the angle here that we want to achieve is 90 degrees. The question is asking me what is the time? What is the time? So whenever you have questions like this, we need to understand only two of the angles. First is aim angle and the second is reference angle. Now what is aim angle? Aim angle means the angle that we are looking for, the angle we are finding which is very difficult to find. Here our aim angle is 90 degrees. We are aiming to find out what is the time at this angle. So this is our aim angle. The second angle is reference angle. Reference angle is very simple to calculate. You just need to find out an angle which is simple to calculate and it's near to this time. Currently, we can observe the angle that I can find is between 4 o'clock. This means if I say reference angle is 4 o'clock, the angle between when the time is 4 o'clock is very simple to calculate, right? It's like 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 intervals. In every 1 interval, what is the angle between 1 intervals here? Check. Ah, it's 30 degrees. So for 4 intervals, it will be 30 multiplied by 4, which is 120. See, reference angle is so simple to calculate. It should be near to the aim angle and simple to calculate. That's it. So here we found out our aim angle. That is 120 degree. Now we just need to find out how much time it took for the clock to travel from 120 degree to 90 degree. So from 120 to 90, it's a catching problem, right? The minute hand and the hour hand, the angle keeps on reducing. So how much angle the minute hand needs to reduce? It's very simple to calculate. It just need to catch up. 120 minus 90, that is just 30 degrees. If we just lower 30 degrees, we can achieve our time. But if I ask you every minute, the minute hand catches our hand by which speed? Yes, it's just 5.5 degrees every minute. But we need to achieve 30 degrees. So what should we do? Yes, 30 divided by 5.5. Now observe, we need to solve this part. It's decimal. So what we'll do is we'll try to convert this into fraction. That is 30 divided by 5.5 turns 11 upon 2. Now, what happens after converting to fraction? It's so simple to calculate fraction. 30 multiplied by 2 over 11. It's just the reciprocal. Now just multiply. 30 multiplied by 2. 60 over 11. So it will take 60 over 11 minutes for the minute hand to form a 90 degree with the hour hand. Because both the hands move at the same time. So the speed that we are looking for should be catching speed, not the minute hand speed. Now understanding this, we'll start with our question. Here, the two things that we need to look for is reference angle and aim angle. That's it. After finding out these two things, we are good to go. Now, the question was asking, we need to find out what is the obtuse angle. So here in this question, aim angle is not given. We need to find out this aim angle. But what will be the reference angle as in which time is simple to calculate yes the angle that we will look for is three o'clock because for finding out the angle for three o'clock it's very simple it's just 90 degrees now observe from 90 degrees we need to achieve this time currently the time is three o'clock from three o'clock to 334 how many minutes has been passed? Yes, it's so simple to calculate. It's just 3 to 334, 34 minutes. Now, the minute hand and the hour hand, both hands move. 
we need to achieve 34 minutes so what will be the angle between them angle means what will be the distance between them to find it out we'll first need to find out what is the total angle from here from 90 degree to all the way to 334 so we can find out the total angle between this part and this part this means between two minutes hand and to calculate it just 34 multiplied by 5.5 and we can get 187 now 187 degree represents the total angle from this part to this part but we need to just find out this angle so which angle we need to subtract yes just 90 degree so we just subtract 187 minus 90 degrees to get the answer that is 97 degrees so the angle that we are looking for the aim angle is 97 degrees so here we have completed the question now whenever you have question based like this based on clock problems there are first three basics that we need to move the three basics are counting what is the speed of minute hand what is the speed of hour hand and by what speed the minute hand chases the hour hand then the two things that we need to look for is if you want to find out time you should know the aim angle and you can easily find out the reference angle near to it so these are the five things that we need to understand now the time for if you are eager to learn more such topics on this we are enrolling for term 2 and term 3 the registration has started so you can sign up by just scanning this qr code you can scan this qr code contact me i can help you register for an entrance test at our center the address is mentioned here you can come down here and give an entrance test so currently i'm teacher smith signing off right now but i'll see you in the next video